Okay, welcome to another Simple Engineering Snippet. In this video, we are going to be working through an energy, uh, conservation of energy example, where we are going to determine the height of the water necessary to uh, support acquired uh, flow rate. So this example looks uh, something like we've uh, done before. And on first thoughts, we could say, well, we can use uh, Bernoulli's equation for this. And if we could use Bernoulli's equation, uh, it would be a very simple problem because we know that the velocity, if we can ignore losses, is equal to the square root of 2gh. So it's a simple matter of converting our volumetric flow rates into velocities and then back calculating for the required h. But looking at the uh, provided data, uh, we see that we have a, a fairly long section of pipe, 80 feet, a little over 24 uh, meters, and it's of a fairly small diameter. So uh, using Bernoulli's equation, ignoring uh, losses, uh, that would not give us a very good answer. So we're not going to be going that route. Okay, so we have additional data. We have the uh, density. And again, you'll note that I'm solving this using uh, uh, British gravitational units and SI. Got the dynamic viscosity. Again, we have the volumetric flow rate. It's commercial steel pipe, so we can look up the standard roughnesses, and we have the diameter and the length. Okay, so a good thing to starting point is we're going to be applying a conservation of energy. So let's select uh, two points to apply that. It's always good that uh, uh, some points that we have, we know everything. Point one, it's open atmosphere, as is point two. Uh, it includes the unknown H, so that's important. And it's a fairly large tank, so we know the velocity at 1 is equal to 0. And at 2, well, we can calculate the, uh, the velocity in its atmosphere, and we're going to be setting the uh, our datum. So uh, the uh, elevation at 2 is going to be equal to 0. Okay, so what is conservation of energy? Well, our starting energy, the, the, the energy at our starting point, in this case, point 1, plus any energy in by a pump, uh, minus our losses. And that's going to be equal to the energy that's left over. So uh, writing that down in the equation form, at point one, we have uh, energy due to pressure, which again is going to be atmospheric, uh, potentially a kinetic energy. So this is going to be zero, our unknown. Uh, we do not have a pump in the system, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, again, we are going to have losses. And so let's go ahead and continue to simplify. And P1 and P2 uh, cancel each other out, and they're both atmospheric, so we could say they're zero. Uh, large tank assumption, so again, the velocity in the tank uh, is negligible. And I set our datum at point 2, so Z2 is equal to zero. And there we have our equation. And solving for that, we have that our height or elevation in the tank is equal to our head loss plus the uh, velocity head. Okay, so here's an equation for head loss, uh, Darcy Weisbeck's equation, and it's the uh, friction factor times L over D plus uh, the sum of the minor loss coefficients times the velocity head. So looking at this, uh, we're definitely going to have a uh, minor loss coefficient at the entrance, and we're going to use uh, that adds equal to 0 0.5. And uh, that's the only one that we're going to consider in this. If there are other fittings in there, we could look that up and include it in this term. Okay, so now let's work on the uh, friction factor. And it's in function of, in general, the Reynolds number and the relative roughness. And so uh, we're going to need to find the Reynolds number. Here's the equation for Reynolds number. Uh, the density times the velocity times the diameter over the uh, dynamic viscosity. And to find the velocity, well, we know the volumetric flow rate. We know the diameter, so we can calculate the area, so we'll be able to find that. And so let's uh, march through this. All calculations were uh, performed uh, using uh, S-Math. And so using the diameter, I'm going to calculate the area. And once I know the area, I can calculate the velocity at point 2, which is, again, the velocity inside our long pipe or tube. And using my equation for the Reynolds number, I get Reynolds number is equal to uh, 4.25 times 10 to the 4, so turbulent flow. And now I need to find the friction factor. And, well, I'm going to use the uh, Jane 
correlation. There are others, but this is an explicit correlation, and it gives a decent accuracy, probably as accurate as looking it up off the, uh, the Moody plot. And so plugging in my Reynolds number, and I have my roughness and the diameter, and I get my friction factor is uh, 0 0.276. Uh, uh, okay, well, let's go ahead and calculate my uh, velocity head. And now I can plug into my uh, head loss equation. Oops, sorry, here it is up here at the top. And obtain the values in both feet and meters. And uh, we're about done because now it's all left is to add these terms. And I obtained my final answer. So to support this flow rate, I am going to need 102.3 feet of uh, water or equivalently uh, 31.2 uh, meters of water. So I hope you found this example uh, useful. Uh, please like and subscribe, but more importantly, have a great day.